So we're going to look at the Dallas airport shooting incident and what took place. So we start off here with the suspect getting out of this Uber vehicle. And the first thing that I'm going to notice is that they have a hoodie on and it is July and it's Dallas. So it's pretty hot out. Now, that's not to say, you know, somebody wouldn't wear a hoodie getting on an airplane because airplanes can sometimes be cold. But nonetheless, if you're wearing a hoodie and the hood's up in summertime, I'm always going to look at you. Uh, a little bit strange. Now you see she goes in the bathroom probably to muster up the courage or whatever, use the restroom. And now when we talk about anomalous behavior and being aware of your surroundings, look at this. Look where she's standing relative to everybody else within the airport, okay? This is not a standard area for somebody to be standing. So not only now do we have somebody who's wearing a hoodie and pants and the hoodie is up in Dallas in the summertime. Look at everybody else's clothing. Everybody else is in shorts and a t-shirt, okay, for the most part. Now they're standing in this random spot that nobody else, the natural flow of traffic, does not actually move to. And it seems as if the once she gets here, now she starts yelling and some crazy stuff. These are all major indicators, okay, of anomalous and possibly harmful behavior. So being aware of your surroundings is eight-tenths of the battle. Now you can see as she starts yelling randomly, oh, everybody just keeps ignoring it. This is why people keep getting hurt in the United States of America, is because people are not recognizing these patternistic types of behavior that are completely obvious to the trained eye and the trained person. We all just stick our faces in our phones and try to ignore everything that's going on around us constantly. It's not a healthy way to live. You're going to get victimized if you continue to do so. Now, as she's yelling, you see that the cop starts coming, running, uh, or come walking from the right side here. He's going to go ahead and kind of confront just to see what's happening. And then she pulls out a gun and then shoots it up into the air. Bam. And you notice how everybody immediately wants to start to hit the deck and how this cop, now, I'm not going to blast him on his response at all, but, I mean, I probably would have just tackled this chick. I mean, he was, like, five feet away from her or at least it seemed like, you know, five, ten feet away. We have the 21-foot rule, right? But I'm not going to blast him on it. He gets back, and he tries taking some sort of uh, cover, draws his firearm. Good on him. That's pretty good. Uh, I think he actually uses the kiosk maybe as a uh, support point. Not really. No, maybe not. And then starts shooting at her, and then, you know, he uh, hits her. She goes down. Now, good job on this guy. Granted, this is not going to stop any bullets. <clears throat> um, you know, good job using some concealment, right? We always make believe that things can stop bullets in times of great stress and fear, uh, even though they can't. You know, guilty is charged. But great job having some good discipline and accuracy because look at this dude shooting. He's shooting right over the heads and right past all these people. If somebody gets up and jumps and tries to run, it's an easy way for them to get clipped. So it's definitely really important to have accuracy uh, and discipline when you know shooting. Now, these people back here, this is why I hate the hide concept in active shooter incidents because look at them. They're, they're just sitting there. They're just standing there. Nobody has clearly ever taught them on how to get out of a situation like this. Hop over the freaking desk and run. Okay, too often we're just caught into this sheep mentality of, oh, it's the desk, I can't jump over that and run. Or, hey, there's a person there with a gun, I can't get up there and beat the crap out of them and kill them because they're trying to kill me. Now, I'm not recommending that you do that, but the point is is that it's better than being frozen <clears throat> standing right there. Excuse me. So, cop engages her. She's still moving around. Still standing there. Waiting to get shot. These people laying here, waiting to get shot. This person, waiting to get shot. Good job, chick. At least somebody has some common sense to get the hell up, but she doesn't really get out of there. I mean, everybody should be booking it right now at this point. Nobody should just be sitting here. Like, this is, this is just dumb. Like, you're not doing anything by sitting over there. Where did that lady come from behind the desk? Yeah, there we go. Finally. Now we have multiple police officers in there. Finally, this person, uh, or I think that might be a responding cop, I don't know.
Good job on this cop and, you know, neutralizing that threat with some prejudice because, you know, I'm sick and tired of people getting shot up. Cops I know have specific, you know, protocol that they need to follow. But I'm just personally sick and tired of seeing people shoot people up like I'm, I'm done with it. Like if you do something like that, oh cool, he does use that as a stability platform at first. But he's still pretty crazy jumping all over the place. And hey, rightfully so, you know, one second ago he's just walking around and now he's in a life or death battle. And he's possibly responsible for saving hundreds of lives at an airport. But I also think that he should be moving at this point. But again, I'm not going to hit him on any of this stuff because he did a great job in neutralizing that threat. Now look at all these cops just standing here. Technically, you're going to want to have dispersion. All right, yep, and you're shot because you're a freaking idiot. So, great job on the cops. Hey, make sure if you're ever caught in a shooter situation, okay, first and foremost, get down, make yourself small, then identify where it's coming from, and then egress out. Always use cover to cover movement. And what I mean by that is things that stop bullets. You run from there, then you stop, you look at the shooter, identify your next point of cover where you run to, creating more distance between the two of you. After you reach 30 yards away from somebody, your chances of survival go up like 50%, and then it's like 10% for every 10 yards after that. So just by getting 50 yards away from somebody, you have an almost 70% chance of surviving. Even with a rifle, pistol, it doesn't matter the caliber of the weapon. So here's a little lesson learned for you, some stuff to go over. Definitely always be aware of your surroundings, anomalous behavior. And then get the hell out of there if there is a shooting. Take care, everybody. Stay safe and always be kind.